Enric Justin, I joined the JIB last year, and one of the things I was very impressed by when I joined is that it felt to me that this is almost a unique organisation in the way it tries to build alliances between both the employers in the ECA and the unions. And in many ways, I think it's something that's quite lacking in wider industry and wider society because one of the things that I've really valued is that the meetings are about topics we've talked about today. I mean, the two excellent speakers we've had already have spoken about how there's a common agenda throughout various industries in this country and quite often unions only really get talked about. I mean, who's talking about unions next week? Well, it's going to be talking about the rail industry. So unfortunately, to a lot of people, that's going to be a negative. And one of the things I've really valued since coming here is the fact that trade unions are very much part of what the JIB is about and talking about how we work together. Everybody works together. So the parts, and I was very interested to see what we're saying our membership offers you. And there are real values with the JIB in terms of the fact that we do standardise the terms and conditions when companies are going for various um, tenders because what we're saying is, you know, we feel that the rate of pay shouldn't be something that somebody tries to skimp on. And we were talking earlier about the contractual obligations that we want to encourage in terms of apprenticeships. I particularly want to discuss two things really and my two colleagues at the back there the two gentlemen from Unite Richard and Stuart I'm going to talk about aspects where the JIB works with the union with both of them firstly I'll, I'll talk about Richard because there's a again one of the things about the JIB it almost seems like a secret sometimes I mean I'm sure a lot of people were not aware until Vicky spoke at quite the breadth in fact, I wasn't aware of the breadth of what our benefits actually produce. And one of the ones, and Richard's really passionate about this, is the Skills Development Fund. We have a fund where certain courses, and I'm afraid you probably helped me, Richard, in terms of what courses are eligible or not, where we provide financing for various electrical professionals, to and we will provide a grant through the skills development fund so again anybody that um, you know it's something we want used and in fact I'm quite embarrassed that we never actually um, we never actually had the full fund used for last year so the skills development fund, the other and this is the case study I really want to talk about is one of the great things about the JIB is that we have these networks, the regional joint industry boards, and unfortunately, like today is the first time I've met Alistair in person, though I've met him remotely for probably about three or four meetings over the he last year. He square box around his head on the eye when I recognised him. <laughs> and at the last Eastern and Midlands JIB, because we, we're always looking what value we add, and what value that meeting added was I first got to meet Stuart from Unite and I started talking about the dispute resolution service and actually this is an area that we're looking at at the moment and we're trying to modernise because although the principles, the philosophy of the JIB are very sound and everyone agrees with it and likes it, Sometimes when you open the green book, I've got one in my bag, I don't know if anyone's got, uh, if I can use one as a prop, Roger. <laughs> when, when, you look in, when you look in the green book, although what's in it is actually a lot of the time very sound and actually very good, the language sometimes, it's the language of 1968 when the JIB was created. Anyway, I spoke to Stuart and 
I discovered that there were a couple of problems with some cases that were going to go to tribunal. And at the time, Stuart wasn't quite aware of what the JIB offered. So I said to Stuart, we got the disputes procedure, but as these two gentlemen were both already applying to the employment tribunal, I said, well, it's not a question of do you go for our disputes or the tribunal. Actually, the value I can add here is I will try and mediate and conciliate with the employer. And it's, it's actually quite funny because you, you could almost have a live demonstration today if GDPR would let me and I would, because when I met Stuart this morning, we've actually managed to get a figure agreed for the second case. So we are actually in a position now where we've managed to talk to the employer, we've talked to ACAS, and we've actually, in print, well, one has already been agreed, and hopefully in principle over lunch today, I'll be able to get the second one agreed, and we'll be able to say that that's another value of what the JIB does. Because what I was able to do with these cases was spend a little bit more time than what ACAS would normally do and the rest of it. So I was able to get to both Stuart's perspective. In fact, I even spoke to the individuals a couple of times, but, and then I spoke to the employer. And I was able to see exactly where we could actually get some sort of resolution. And with the process we're doing at the moment in terms of looking at the dispute procedure, one crucial step change we've already agreed is we're going to stop calling it dispute we are going to call it resolution because I think a lot of the time in and it was quite funny talking to Richard and Stuart this morning uh, Richard reminded us that back in the day we probably called it trouble we probably said you know rather than a dispute oh well there's some trouble trouble at mill or there's trouble at... so what we're actually now going to be saying is actually the JLB is going to be offering resolution and we we're going to look at how, because I think words are really important. So if you've got the language of resolution rather than the language of dispute, then we'll be looking at how can we resolve situations as well as obviously still offering the uh, procedure where people can go through and the rest of it. So I don't know if you want to join me for a moment, Stuart, but Stuart was going to just say a few words from his perspective of how how the um, how the procedure had gone. Yeah, right. Um, good morning, everyone. I've had the introduction, Stuart Baker, Regional Officer for Unite. And um, I've got a bit of a confession, really. Um, you know, I was very uh, unaware of all of the uh, roles that the JIB could offer. We had this particular uh, redundancy situation. A uh, very large UK company doing a very large government project, and it was winding down, it was closing down, they had to make redundancies and there was a process of redundancies to, uh, to, to go through. These two individuals and a number of others were the, on the shortlist for the first raft of selection and these two individuals disagreed with being chosen as the first people of selection. So, you know, it was a festive period uh, when these uh, redundancies were made so it was a bit upsetting for everyone. Um, and we tried our best to, you know, approach the employer in the normal way that we would do as, a, as, as union uh, representatives. We, we had gone through all of this redundancy process with these, uh, supporting these, uh, these employees. Um, but uh, it was to no avail. And these two individuals were sort of in our sights as to the first, the first people to register for employment tribunal. Then, the, then came the sort of light bulb moment for me, uh, following on from obviously speaking to Richard and attending regional J, um, JIB meetings. Um, it was, why not try this angle? Why not try an angle where, you know, JIB could get involved and, and arbitrate and on, on our behalf? Um, I have to say, my experience of ACAS over the years, we have, we have seen, uh, I don't want to be critical, but a lack or a lesser involvement 
in trying to, res to, to, res to resolve the, the issue. They're happy to just make that token sort of approach to an employer and then issue the certificate. That's, that's how I see it, you know, it's probably a personal view, but I'm sure my co other colleagues would, uh, would support that also. So whether there's been a, a sea change in uh, ACAS early conciliation process, who knows, but uh, it often is the case with very little dialogue with the employer, the certificate's issued and off we go, get the tribunal paperwork drafted together, etc., etc. So um, yeah, JIB got involved, Richard, thankfully stepped into the bridge and um, spoke to the employer, went back and forth for a few months, as you would expect. These two individuals were particularly difficult. They wanted their day in court, you know, they were so aggrieved of what, uh, how they'd been treated and, you know, uh, and obviously spoken to a few uh, pub barristers, shall we call them, who've said their case is worth God knows how many K. <laughs> and uh, off they thought they could do, you know, champion, you know, it will support this all the way. And, you know, and uh, we demand their solicitors, uh, you know, take us to the steps of the court and all this. But uh, lo and behold, like I say, Richard did a fantastic job in speaking to the employer, in brokering a package of, of, uh, of compensation. And slowly but surely, the one agreed, he had lesser, a lesser complicated case. And as of today, as Richard's rightly said, the more complicated uh, individual uh, has also agreed to accept a similar sort of amount, which will be uh, processed obviously via ACAS in a COP3 agreement. So yeah, can't, can't think, thank JIB enough for their, for their involvement. Um, like I said at the beginning, it's something I completely, you know, wasn't, wasn't aware of. Um, and you know, we, we've, without the JIB, or in a different sector, we'd have probably gone marching on to our point where we either let the member down by not supporting them because their case is not strong enough, and that's, that often is the case now. You know, solicitors are weighing up the value of a case, uh, the overall uh, uh, likelihood of, of it being successful in court, and again, the cost, the element of cost that's, that the union would have to um, endure. So all these things are taken and often it's, it's us that has to deliver the message back to the member that we're not taking the case forward and, you know, by all means, seek your own independent advice. And then it's, what did I join a union for and blah, blah, blah. You know, so uh, yeah, thankfully, JIB did that intervention for us and we've come to some successful uh, conclusions there with these two. There is a couple of other ones waiting in the wings, lesser value, um, but hopefully, um, the precedent has been set now with this particular large company. Uh, we would like to see that, um, you know, we could uh, come to some sort of fruit, fruitful conclusion with these very quickly. Thanks for your, uh, thanks for your time.